So here are a few um, of the models that I've created using this uh, this system I'm going to show you of the trim brush, the polish brush, and the planer brush. You can see it's all sketched in. Not too much detail because I'm just deciding on the overall concept. I will develop them further, uh, but the core, f uh, the key for me really is right now to show you how you can sketch this hard surface stuff quite fast, including these grills and all of these holes and and uh, all of that stuff. Those helmets in this fashion are uh, super easy to do. So uh, I'm going to initialize this copy of ZBrush real quick just to clear everything out of memory and then I'm going to set this model up. Also I like to work with rate set to zero so that it's a no gradient in the background and I'll be right back with the model. So the way I'm going to set this up is I'm just going to clone the model go to subtool and append it to itself. This is going to give me two versions. Uh, one that's going to represent the skin and then one that's going to represent the uh, the mech suit. So I like to go into inflate and uh, simply shrink that in slightly. It's a little much. It doesn't have to be much. It just has to go inside. There we go. Some problems with that so I'll just smooth it out. Make sure I got the right one selected. Okay. Alright, so with the uh, body visible and with the soldier, uh, with the other, the mech suit base visible, we're going to get right to business. So I'm going to press P or B to bring up the brush palette, T to show the trims, and D for the dynamic. And in this case, I'm going to press Alt because I want to switch from Z sub to Z add because I want to build some form right now. Uh, I could just go in and press Z add but I find that uh, alt is just closer. Okay, let's just build a little bit. Thinking about anatomy as I build. Not worrying too much about the planes. or the specific direction. I, I am worried about global overall planes. I think I'm going to add a helmet in here as well, so I'm just going to... or let's just say a breather unit, actually. Something that just encompasses his nose. I'm going to go to uh, clay brush to just add a little bit of clay there where I just didn't want to add for me. sort that one out a little later and uh, still pressing alt don't know what this is going to all do but we'll figure it out and something that's really useful is to go into the clothing or sorry the body and you just darken the body slightly make sure RGB is on go color fill object there we go back to the suit back to creating form. Oops, I don't like RGB to be on for that. Now I'm I'm using trim for what it really does, you know, not pressing alt and just Z sub. Now it's useful sometimes to also use clay as I mentioned earlier. Just build up the volume. Uh, let me just set the color back to white. And I don't know exactly what we're going to build here. I am stroking across some of the muscle contours, assuming that that makes a difference. I'm going to embed that somewhere in the sacrum. And still in the clay brush, I want to see what kind of large forms I want to develop. So if we wanted to say put a jetpack in there, um, there are some options. Jetpack might be a bit intense for this guy, but we can certainly put some kind of carrying mechanism and add it up uh, here. 
give him a little bit more weight right there. Okay, still only the clay brush, because I'm using it to kind of build form. And then uh, let's switch over to Trim Dynamic and start to focus on some of the other forms. In this case, it uh, might be wise to hide the arms. Well, that's hiding too much of the arms. What I really want to do is hide down here just the biceps. So I'm going to switch over to rotate and I'm going to press control, click and drag out a mask. There we go. And then I'm going to go to the new uh, visibility palette and just say hide points. That'll work for me. And uh, I might want to invert that and then go to polygroups, create a group for it. just so I can isolate that later. Okay, now we're going to show the body and the ears. And we're back in with Trim Dynamic. And how many polygons? Uh, almost a million. We'll, uh, we'll live with that. Uh, okay, oops, Trim Dynamic. Pressing Alt here gives me a nice little clean plane, gives me a nice little circular surface to mess with. Okay, cut across right there. And let's just give this a little bit of a hood. And uh, let's see what we're going to add here. I'm going to trim this slightly, give it a bit of an angle. And uh, the weight is going to be coming from the front, let's say. Let's create a nice strong diagonal in. just sketching at this point, nothing too specific. In fact, we can push all of this back, I think. We're risking some changes, some problems with uh, the hidden polygons, but uh, I think we're going to be mostly okay. All right, and then let's add this back. Some problems with polygons there, but trim brush is going to largely ignore that. All right, so we're just looking for overall volumes, nothing too specific. I am going to go in and try to create some wedges in here, some uh, some shadows and secondary uh, edges. Uh, let's see. Okay, push that in. I'm not going to worry too much about the interaction there, um, of the uh, you know how it's going to fold in. Not going to sweat that. Okay, so now to be even more specific with this, we're going to have to start to switch our brushes up a bit because Trim Dynamic is really designed to uh, blend areas together, you know, while keeping uh, some consistent planes. Uh, but it's not really going to get uh, some of the smaller details that I want. So for those, I want to go into Trim Adaptive. And Trim Adaptive is really the same brush, but once oriented is on as opposed to continuous orientate. 
So if I switch to trim dynamic, continuous orientate. But let's go here, trim adaptive. We've got once orientate. And uh, for this, I'm going to, well, let's just leave the arms visible. But notice how as I move along the surface, the brush is changing its direction based on the normal that it's sampling. So I want to pick this normal and pull that inside the body. So we've pulled that in slightly. And I'm going to pull that further in. Okay. This is going to create harder edges, which is going to give me the chance to create some lips and just some different levels. There we go. And again, just experimenting here. Not sure where any of this is going. Not a bad idea to try an alpha. We're really losing a lot of uh, topology out here in the back area where it's just getting way too stretched. So let's just make sure we're showing the entire model. And uh, if it gets too bad, you can always go to geometry and say equalize uh, surface area. So keep in mind that that's uh, really only going to happen at the lowest subdivision level. So let's just try it, see what kind of trouble we get into. So has it added anything? Let's hide the body here and see. Looks like we're not getting too much added where we wanted. Uh, well, it looks like actually the body did get some more added as opposed to here. So we should be able to get more out of that sculpt. Now I'm going to turn frame off, smooth this out slightly. Yeah, that looks nicer. OK. Smooth. We're going to go through multiple stages here, so it's fine that it's a little rough right now. And uh, there we go. It's n not a bad idea with the uh, trim adaptive to multiple soft strokes. That's what you see me doing right here. Multiple soft strokes. And I adjust my draw size. Yeah. And I'm going to switch out of that alpha. Show the whole body. Press Alt. And it's pretty dramatic, so you can check uh, your lower your uh, Z intensity. See if that'll be a little bit nicer to work with. But let's see what we can do here. forms are pretty clean so we don't have a lot of secondary shapes to take advantage of so but I'm getting something down here okay and now I want to take a look at trim front trim front is choosing a specific orientation and what it's done is actually pulled the orientation from the canvas And so that's allowing us to create some different forms. I don't know if those are going to really work for us, but we'll see. And then some handles in there. Pull that up slightly. And down slightly. OK, straight edge connect there. Anything in the back that might be useful? Okay. That's not shabby. Pull up here. Pull down here. Yeah, there we go. 
and uh, press Alt. Voila. Okay, now let's go back to Trim Adaptive and start to clean some of this up. But Trim Adaptive is going to have limited use for this. So we're going to need to take a look at a new brush, something that's going to give us even um, finer control than what Trim Adaptive is doing. Notice I'm actually wasn't a big fan of those marks that I made. So I'm trying to erase them from your memory as fast as humanly possible. There we go. Okay, and why don't we build a bridge right there.